You know, in additive manufacturing for production parts, it's moved beyond the, a prototyping technology. Pro prototyping technology, cost, time, were really secondary concerns, but as we move to manufactured additive parts, these things matter. It's about pounds on the ground, it's about throughput. I'm with Michael Schuske, he's Operating Manager for Additive Manufacturing with Sandvik Machining Solutions. And Michael, now I understand uh, you have a sample part here which is an exhaust collector, clearly not a, a classic automotive part, but uh, moving to additive gives you some abilities that you can't do with other like machining or subtractive techniques. Yes, I mean, it, it, it really opens up uh, uh, design possibilities for things that have been difficult or impossible to do before. And, and I mean, at Sandvik, we want to see how, how this can play a role for us internally, but also how we can help customers that we have today that traditionally have been machining this and have had difficult, where we have had our tooling offering at, 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 as our business. And now they're looking at additive, which materials to choose, which techniques to use. So we built up a center in Sandviken with different techniques for interpol, internal purposes first, but also looking then how we can help our customers. Now uh, Sandviken and San, Sandvik in general, of course, is a well-known uh, center of competence for cutting, specifically machining technologies in particular. Sandvik, of course, also well known as a, a supplier of advanced materials as well, but usually thought of in bulk materials, yep. coil, strip, sheet. And in this case, we're talking about metal powders, which is a radically different technology in a way. This is, so is this, does Sandvik, do you, do you anticipate this is going to be, will this replace the subtractive or the, the other technologies? For me, it, it's, I mean, additive is a new tool in our toolbox for production. I mean, it will be a different techniques or different additive techniques will have their pros and cons. So, I mean, it's, it's extremely important to keep the product in focus. What are you going to produce? And if additive is a solution to do this smarter, you will put it into the production flow that you're building up. But there will be process steps after. I mean, we can take this um, uh, concept mill that we have developed. It's a lightweight mill, but I mean, it's, it's made out of tool steels that we produce ourselves, the powder up, but it will be a hardening process. I mean, you need to machine the insert seat. There are steps coming after it. And it's important that you think, even in the additive step, that you take care of the steps afterwards. You're thinking the whole chain. Mm. And if additive makes sense then, and then you still can produce a product with better functionality, go for it. Now, is it possible you can win back some of that cost argument? Because one of the arguments against additive is, well, it's very, very slow compared to subtractive. But if there's post machining processes anyway, and you can pull some weight and, and pull some material out of it, can you win back some of the, the cost time? Definitely, I can see that happening in certain, I mean, as long as you put in functionalities that are difficult to produce today, I mean, you EDM drill really long holes and you need to plug them, etc. Can you find smarter solution for that? Combining it with the post-processing and doing it in a rational way, that's, it's, you definitely can see economic in this. Is injection molding, is the molding and die cast molding, is that, is that a hot spot, do you think, for additive going forward? It's definitely one of the techniques that have, I mean, have, have started to use this and, and, and yes, that will move forward for, for additive, but I think in, in the years that I've been active in this, I can see that it's more moving also into more general engineering. Now you're starting to get companies like ours looking at our tools, but also other engineering companies, see how can we use additive for making parts that we have had difficulties before, but I think the conformal coolant, that's one way of using it, but there's so much more that you can do. I mean, you really have to liberate your mind of design freedom here to, 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 to use additive at, at full extent. Now, in this case, you're showing an example of a part, of course, which is uh, essentially a tool holder yeah. that holds inserts in yeah. this case. Uh, similarly, there are some experts who say that the, that the low-hanging fruit in additive is not part making, it's fixturing. Yeah. It's, in, it's in making the components that help you make the parts down there. Is, it, is there still room to be, room to grow, room to develop on that fixturing, uh, jigs and fixture side of the business? Yes, I do think so. I mean, it's, uh, I can see, see that also happening. It's not that maybe something that we've been so much involved in yet. Uh, so I don't know how big that is. Yeah. I mean, uh, usually when we are doing internally fiction, we do it in plastics. I mean, that's the quickest way of doing it. Yeah. But I think if you have more advanced things, then, then you want to do it with metals. Yeah. In terms of competence, is, is the engineering community competent enough to fully take advantage of this technology? They need to reach out to you, for example, and say, help me develop this product. Uh, how's it going to work? We want to be part of this. And, and, and I think with our material background as, as Sandvik as a company and, and with a being world leader in metal cutting, I, I can definitely see us as helping industry out, finding ways forward and helping them selecting materials, selecting the additive process. I mean, we're building up a capability in trying to be machine supplier independent. We see this as you really 
you need to challenge the different additive technologies to see which one is the best. I mean, binder jetting or powder bed fusion or direct energy, which makes most sense for the component being made. So I, 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 I think a lot of the industry are waking up seeing the possibilities. Michael Shusky at Sandvik Machining Solutions bringing forward the state of the art in metal additive manufacturing.